It's an emotional roller coaster. It's an emotional yeah. roller coaster. <laughs> I picked up and it was one of the lecturers um, that we have now. He was like, is this um, full full name? He said full name. <laughs> it's just so nice how yeah. we we both got in the same oh. way and now we're just living our lives together. It's just oh. such a high, best feeling ever. It's wonderful. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much if you're a new returner or you're just watching for the first time. I appreciate it so much. In today's video is going to be a collaboration between me and my friend Annabelle. We both got into medical school through clearing, so I thought it'd be good if we both have a chat on everything you'd want to know about the application process and our medical school journey, especially for clearing because you, you know that's a rare occurrence. So <laughs> you can see the sun is shining. It's just a gorgeous day, a delightful day, so I want you to all have a nice time. Kettles boil, glasses filled, and let's get into it. <laughs> We're joined here today by Annabelle. Hello. Do you want to start off with your GCSEs? Yeah, of course. So my GCSEs, my compulsory ones were um, maths, English language, English literature and RE. And for my chosen ones, I did further maths, biology, chemistry, physics, Latin and German. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, because in Northern Ireland, we don't do the nine to one system. So we're still like the old traditional, like A star to F. And how did you find that they were your GCSEs? I was really happy with my GCSEs like I got like enough that was to get me into like the next stage of like the medical school application I was really pleased with them. For me I did the standard English language, English lit, maths, oh I did have, <laughs> I did triple science, I did IT was compulsory in our school and then I picked history, food and nutrition, business studies and Spanish. Overall GCSEs went okay, I got the grades I needed to do the A-levels I needed for medicine, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to A-levels. For my A-levels I did maths, biology, chemistry and German. People kind of always ask me like why did I do German if I wanted to do medicine and the reason why I did German is because I just thought it was really nice having like a break from like the hardcore sciencey subject. I'd always really enjoyed German, like growing up to school. It's just, it's just something a wee bit different. Yeah. Can you speak any German now? Hello? <laughs> That's lit. Oh, honestly, like my memory's like a sieve. It's just gone mm. out so quickly. <laughs> That's, a, That's fine. That's fine. It'll get you by. It'll get you by. <laughs> I did chemistry, biology, and psychology, which was nice because I had psychology. Well, I thought it would be nice. To have like psychology on the side like something a bit different but honestly with chemistry and biology at least i knew what i needed to do but with psychology because it was essay based like you could write something that you thought was really good but then you find out that oh you don't have the right analysis or you don't have the right technique but I you powered, did it. I, I powered you through. Did I just did. You did it. <laughs> I powered through and I did it. I will include like a website that it tells you for all the medical schools, like all their requirements for GCSEs, for A levels. And I remember I was using that. It was really helpful when I was applying. How did you find that your A levels were? Like, which ones would you say was your hardest? I'd say for me, defo chemistry was the hardest oh. one for me. Like, <laughs> so many formulas, so many equations. Like. Honestly, like, my brain was just too full. It literally just couldn't fit any in. <laughs> <laughs> but we managed to get here in the we end. We managed to get yeah. here. And that's all that matters. So moving on to where, where you applied for medicine. So I applied for Queen's Belfast, Manchester, Newcastle, Edinburgh, and I got four rejections. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's, no, it's not nice to get any rejections, so wow. Oh. No, it's definitely, like, one of the worst feelings in the world, mm -hmm. but... It's all going to be okay. Yeah. Where did you apply? <laughs> so I applied to Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool and Kent and Medway and I got four rejections to be honest too. So it's not a nice feeling to get any mm. kind of rejection. Um, Especially like when you work so hard for something, for something that you want so much and it's just like such a heartbreaking moment. It is. Mm. Would you say that there's anything that you like would do differently now looking back what do you think happened i'd say for me it was definitely the interviews were the thing that brought me down um because i did get three interviews and it was just rejection after rejection after rejection oh and i think my main problem with interviews was like i was so nervous like you never really have like anything similar to that beforehand like growing up in school you never really had like many interviews like that before so it's like such a brand new environment I remember at the time I was so hung up on trying to like sound so sophisticated and use all these fancy words but 
honestly at the end of the day like all they want to see is that you can have just like a normal conversation with someone and that like, you you can just speak words get words out your mouth like that's yeah. all they want to see really mm-hmm. that you're a kind genuine person absolutely yeah don't get too hung up with trying to sound smart or anything just be yourself yeah that's beautiful <laughs> advice i'm gonna be on Lisa's own channel <laughs> me it was my UCAT that let me down so I I was revising so hard for the exam I spent about two months like constant revision to be honest, in the exam I knew it wasn't going well because I was just running out of time on each section I got my score and I just remember I went home and I, I started crying because, oh, <laughs> because I was just like is this all the work I've done to be getting that like personally it didn't reflect on how the work I'd put in and I just knew because with UCAT all the unis like they use that to distinguish between people mainly so I just knew that I'm a a bit screwed here because yeah and so yeah I got four rejections without interview I just remember it was the same week I was just getting rejections so like Monday Tuesday (laughs) Wednesday Thursday Unfortunately, oh, this is the end of the road. <laughs> yeah, it's not nice. It's really not yeah. nice. I feel like you don't really like understand that proper feeling, like if uh, until like you've properly been rejected. It's just like yeah. so heartbreaking. Honestly. It's so heartbreaking. Mm. But yeah, I'd say that my top tip is that you need to apply strategically. So if you know you've got a low UCAT, then apply to unis that take a low UCAT because at the end of the day, that's what they're going to look at. They've literally just got like a cut off point. Um, and if you're below that, then you're below that and you'll just get rejected. So you definitely do need to be strategic in where you apply. Apply to the right unis that you have the highest chance of getting into, definitely. Mm. That's very wise advice. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to talk about the, what your plans were, like when you found out about the four rejections, what you yeah. decided to do? So as soon as I got my last rejection, which was the one I was really hoping for, I was so heartbroken, honestly. For the first few days, I just literally did nothing. I just moped around the house, didn't want to talk to anyone. It was just such a horrible feeling. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to spend the next few days just to kind of like, just kind of reflect on what's just happened and like just trying to accept it in a sense. Yeah, yeah. So then after like a few days, I kind of thought to myself, you know what, like it's happened, it's happened, that's in the past. Like we can only focus on the future can't change the past but you can change your future absolutely (laughs) wise words it's very true honestly i wasn't really sure what to do at the time so first option was to either do biomedicine at queen's which i already had an offer for or i could do a gap pm reapply after speaking to a few people and like what their experiences of like doing biomedicine and doing graduate entry medicine afterwards i decided i think the gap year was just more for me personally i also thought it was just a really good opportunity as well just to kind of like develop myself as a person like outside the textbooks as well because like especially in the pandemic as well I was already working in a care home so I thought you know this is like a great experience for me just a great opportunity just to kind of like develop like those life skills outside of like yeah, yeah. work and it turns out I didn't even need to go on a gap year in the end and <laughs> now I'm here with Temi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was your options? Um, so I had plans to do a gap year because obviously you've got the option to do a degree and then go into postgraduate entry um, but I just knew I didn't want to do that because there was no degree that I wanted to do, number one, except for medicine. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to take three years out and then having to go through the application process again, potentially getting a whole another rejection. I just knew straight away I wanted to do a gap year. I was working at Marks and Spencer's just as a part-time job, but I was also working at a care home volunteering. So I was going to go full-time um, working at the care home but as a care assistant and then leave mm-hmm. MS. Just for me to get more experience in that kind of role, I thought would be good mm-hmm. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to speak about results day? <laughs> results day, results day. Oh, honestly, for my results day, I remember it second by second, honestly. It felt like yesterday, to be honest. I remember sitting there at like 8 a.m., waiting for like the count to go down for like the results to be put online. And I literally physically could not get my finger to click on the screen to get the results to pop up. So my dad did it for me. (laughs) And then literally like, as soon as you get the results, like we were both saying before, like we literally had no time to relax. We had to get on that grind, get on that telephone. About an hour before the results came out, I was looking online. I was actually looking on the Wii student room website. The student (laughs) room. room. It's quite useful sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. (laughs) But they had a really good Wii forum on clearing. It was really useful just to see what unis were clearing at the time. But because of the time before the A-level grades changed because of the whole problem of us in a pandemic and stuff, um, 
At the time I had a B in biology, meaning that I was only really allowed to apply for Sunderland as a medical school. So I thought to myself, okay, you've got one shot here. Like, let's make it worth it. Let's try it because you never know, honestly. So then I got on the phone straight away and asked for an interview. So they just asked me a few questions about myself, like what my results, what my UCAT. And then I got my interview slot for the Saturday morning. So how was your results today? So it was chaotic because I remember <laughs> that morning I was like on about an hour before I was on the student room as well looking like who's going to be in clearing for medicine <laughs> so um, it was 8am yeah let's see my results um but I managed to get three A's and then I didn't even have time to process it I was like okay I've got the grades I need let me get on this phone um <laughs> so I made sure to hop on the phone immediately I called them up and they were asking the general questions so like oh what was your GCSEs uh, what was your A levels? Mm -hmm. And then they got on to what was your UCAT score? And honestly, at that point, I was just like, they've got me here. Oh. <laughs> they've got me here because I knew that's where what had failed me in all my previous applications. So I just knew I've, I've got so far. And once again, this is where we fall down. Oh. But um, so I said my score, and I was like, I was ready. I was ready for her to hang up. And then she was like, okay, what was your um, band? Because you also have your situational judgment band. And um, I was like, band one. I did get a band one. <laughs> no, that's what that's what pulled me up. And then she was like, "Yeah, that's that's perfect. You're eligible. I'll send you all your all the details over for the interview, the maths test, the roles and responsibilities form." So this was on the Thursday. So my interview was Friday. The next day, my maths test was Friday. Uh, the roles and responsibilities form was like when was that Saturday? I think it was 5 p.m. on the Saturday. 5 p.m. Saturday sharp. <laughs> you have to hand that in. <laughs> that was such a jump pack two days. It was a jump pack two days. Like it's a bit of a blur. But it was so worth it in the end. It was so worth it. And mm -hmm. the interview, I feel like another thing is because I had never had a medicine interview, so I didn't know what to expect. The good thing about our interview is that they sent us like a video to watch beforehand. They're like, oh, you're going to be asked to talk about this, have a discussion about the communication skills. It was nice that we had something some part of the interview that we could were prepared for because mm -hmm. I feel like that helped ease the nerves a bit. <laughs> but how did you find the online interview compared to your like face to face ones? I remember all my face to face interviews, like I was so nervous. And especially like seeing all the other people getting interviewed, it just made me feel so nervous. People look so much like more sophisticated than me. They look so smart. But especially doing on the online interview, like it was just you in that room, so you just focus on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, the interviewers, some of them are like the lecturers we have now, and they yeah. were so lovely. So lovely. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely made the experience a lot more bearable to go through because they were just so nice. And sometimes it just felt like a normal conversation with them as well. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that hour went by so it quickly. It went by so fast. <laughs> it was literally over before you know it. <laughs> it was, but yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was good, I feel. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about how we found out that we'd got into medical school? It was the Monday morning, wasn't it, yeah. that we got told, and I was actually in work again that day. So it was about 10am, so we just like finished breakfast in the care home and all the residents were all relaxing in the lounge, and I was just about to go on my break. And then all of a sudden my phone starts buzzing, which I was quite surprised, because like, usually with UCAS you just get like an email saying your UCAS account is updated, I wasn't expecting a call. Um, and it was a mobile number anyway, so I was like, surely not. <laughs> and then like my other co-workers were like, go, go answer it, you never know. So I just rushed into the toilet cubicle, I was on the phone. <laughs> And I was like, hello? And then all of a sudden, it was one of the lecturers we have now. And then he, he was just like, hello there. Um, I'm one of the lecturers from Sunderland Uni. I'm just wanting to let you know how you got on with the interview. And then he paused and I thought to myself, oh no, it's bad news again. Because you know when you get to that point, you're just so used to getting rejections. Like you're just waiting for another one to come basically. And then he said like, I'm just so happy to let you know you've actually got a place into oh Sunderland Uni. Gosh. And at that point, I just paused. I was like, what, really? no way and it was actually so funny how this went down on <laughs> the phone and I was like thank you so much honestly honestly thank you so much like you just don't know how much this means to me and Aww. I was just such on a high best feeling ever it's wonderful what about yours <laughs> oh so I remember um it was about 9am in the morning and why is my phone ringing at 9am in the morning <laughs> I was so used to getting rejections Aww. I was like it's just gonna be a rejection if it is them calling um, but I picked up and it was one of the lecturers um, that we have now and he was like, is this um, full, full name? He said full name. <laughs> they were like, hello, is this Temi? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then they were like, I would just like to let you know that we would like to offer you a place at the Aww. medical school. And honestly, my heart. <laughs> it's just the best feeling in the whole world. When you've been through that whole thing of like getting yeah. the rejections and 
such an emotional roller coaster. It's such an emotional yeah. roller coaster. <laughs> and yeah. the best day of my life, honestly. Mm -hmm. I will never forget. It just really just goes to show you like things happen for a reason. Absolutely. Halfway through second year I'd say. It's scary how quickly it's gone by so quickly. It's flashed. Everyone, I'm just so happy that I got in. That's just like you would never think that like, oh, I'm gonna end up in Sunderland and look where we are and it couldn't have worked out any better I'd say. What's like your favourite thing about being here? <laughs> My favourite thing about being here is probably the people because they're just so they're so lovely. Hello Annabelle, oh, number, number one. <laughs> I think it's so nice that our course it only has like a hundred people in our year, so it's so personal and you get to know the lecturers so well and they're just so down to earth honestly. Yeah, like it doesn't feel like they're your lecturers it feels like that you can approach them and you can just have a nice conversation with them mm -hmm. yes <laughs> oh, i do love it here i do oh, love it here if i never came here i would have never met you oh my like, god i don't know what my life would be like <laughs> where would i be without you Tammy? <laughs> The thing is with me and Annabelle is that like we have most sessions together so we have PBL together and then like when we're face to face we have quite a few things together mm -hmm. so it's just so nice how yeah. we've, we've both got in the same oh. way and now we're just living <laughs> our lives together I remember back to when we first met Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, let's get into it! Yeah. <laughs> so it was Freshers mm -hmm. Me and Annabelle started talking and I, I literally remember this word for word so Tamara was just like to me, oh, have you found it in Sunderland so far? And I was like, you know what? I'm actually having such a good time considering like this is the first time I've ever been to Sunderland. Like I've never been here before. And she was like, no way. It's my first time here too. And I was trying to figure, figure out, wait, surely Tammy would have had an interview here too. So how can this only be like the first, first time? Because I honestly thought I'd be the only one who'd gotten through clearing. But then we came to the realization and it was so funny. We like held our hands like this <laughs> and we were like, we made it at last, we made it. <laughs> it was a gorgeous moment. That was such a special moment between us. Yeah. And that's where it all started. It and now we're here. <laughs> but Anna, that was one of my first friends that I met when Aww. I got here. And she will be a lifelong friend. Oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, like, you're so lovely. Was, and like... No, because I've got some words to say. This is the most loveliest girl you will ever meet in your oh, life. Terry. In oh, your life. Oh, so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> we need help. We do, we do. So much for having me thank with you for you. coming so thank you for joining i'm so honored to make a wee appearance with Matt in my and it's honestly i want you <laughs> i want you here every month oh, thank you <laughs> thank you so much for watching guys we hope you've enjoyed it if um you could subscribe if you haven't already comment what you want to see next and like that would be amazing and i would appreciate it so much <laughs> until next time everyone thank you <laughs>